Topping today's news, we get more on what the government plans are from the speech from the throne, poaching in Bahamian waters by Dominicans and visitors exceeding the catch limit on the rise again. The new Minister of Agriculture weighs in on the marijuana legislation and it's National Youth Month here in the Bahamas. <laughs> Good evening, Bahamas. I'm Jorino Saunders. This is your JCN Evening News, and it is a pleasure to have you join us. The Davis administration has set what the Governor General of the Bahamas has called an ambitious legislative agenda for change. This agenda is one that will see the Progressive Liberal Party government continue its mandate, which it set when it first took office in September of 2021. Governor General Cynthia Pratt, while laying out the government's plans on Wednesday, revealed that the government will bring to Parliament a number of new bills. One of those bills include the Bahamas National Development Plan Bill, which may be seen as a continuation from what was started under the Christie administration in 2016. My government will also introduce a number of bills to help grow and diversify our economy. By putting the National Development Plan on a statutory footing, my government seeks to ensure that the next 50 years of our national life will have a fine strategic underpinning and focus. Prime Minister Davis earlier this year announced that the government reappointed the National Development Plan Committee, inclusive of civil society, the business community, labor, and religious leaders. Additionally, a secretariat will be appointed to support the implementation of the work. As for other new legislation, Governor General Pratt said the government will bring forth a new urban renewal bill, a new local government bill, a national security council bill, a new court service bill, a new bill to govern funeral homes and amend the Immigration Act. My government will introduce economic empowerment zone legislation. This will set out a range of initiatives and concessions to support specific industries and specify geographic areas. The Governor General says the Davis administration is promoting greater economic security for the Bahamian people and the country as a whole. As political and social turmoil continues to wreak havoc on law-abiding citizens of Haiti, the United Nations Security Council is now one step closer to sending a multinational security force to Haiti to assist the Haitian government in restoring law and order. In August, the Bahamas committed to sending 150 officers to assist the multinational force that will be led by 1,000 officers from Kenya. Earlier this week, we heard from Commodore of the Royal Bahamas Defense Force, Dr. Raymond King, who says Bahamian troops are ready and prepared for the mission, but he preferred to have the Minister of National Security, Wayne Monroe, expand further on any particular details. While well, on Wednesday, while speaking to a local daily, Minister Monroe informed that 150 Bahamian soldiers have already been chosen and trained and that he anticipates some of the officers selected also speak Creole, as there are Creole speakers in all of our security forces, he said. Minister Monroe also said more details will be forthcoming after certain preliminaries have been conducted. He explained that officials are studying the terms of the United Nations resolution before making any final decisions. The National Security Minister said the end goal is to bring sufficient peace to Haiti for there to be free and fair elections that would allow the Haitian people People to decide what happens in their own country. He said, this has always been the position of the Prime Minister, Prime Minister Philip Davis, as we cannot impose a solution on the people of Haiti. According to the United Nations, more than 3,000 homicides have been reported in Haiti this year and over 1,500 cases of kidnapping for ransom. Fishermen in the country have voiced their displeasure on what they consider an increase in poaching activities in Bahamian waters, asking the government to consider the offense a major economic crime. New Minister of Agriculture and Marine Resources Jomo Campbell speaking on the matter says there are discussions moving towards possibly amending laws that affect marine business in the country. 
I personally have not had the chance to meet with the fishing, fishing community at large, but what I can say is privately, um, conversations are on the way to address that issue. Uh, one of the main priorities for us is prevention and detection. And so conversations are being had um, with certain persons as it relates to um, GIS and tracking and detection systems, um, IT systems that we can use, you know, because if we can detect fishing boats that are coming into our waters that shouldn't be here, and we have a collaborative uh, effort with the Royal Bahamas Defense Force who patrol our seas, prevention is always better than cure. At the beginning of last month, National Fisheries Association Secretary Paul Malis called on the government to start making an example of fishermen illegally poaching in Bahamian waters, going beyond seizing their boats and move towards putting offenses or offenders rather on a stop list. Minister Campbell speaks of countries coming together to find solutions as the Bahamas is not the only nation facing this issue. And as I indicated earlier, we will also be hosting a special session of the Caribbean Regional Fisheries Mechanism Ministerial Council where we will flesh out all of these issues because the Bahamas doesn't face uh, the nightmare of poaching alone. And so what we want to do is get a collaborative approach as to how we as a region can, can stem the tide of uh, illegal poaching in our waters. According to Mr. Mailers, who says the issue goes beyond the Dominicans poaching in Bahamian waters, which is well documented, but a combination of poaching sources such as Florida residents and second homeowners exceeding catching limits, as well as local fishermen who do not follow the marine laws. Fishermen. While speaking on the upcoming Caribbean Agricultural Week kicking off this Sunday, Minister of Agriculture and Marine Resources Jomo Campbell revealed that there would be a special session of cannabis farming or on cannabis farming. At this week's Office of the Prime Minister's press briefing, Minister Campbell expanded on what is expected during this particular session on marijuana. High-level stakeholders, and no pun intended, um, the high-level <laughs> stakeholders in the region will speak to their experience about medical cannabis. Uh, this session is entitled A Regional Conversation on Cannabis and will be held on Thursday, October 12th at 5.30 p.m. Um, through to 7 p.m. Um, now we expect that countries such as Belize, Jamaica, and St. Lucia will speak about their roadmap to cannabis farming and provide an insightful conversation on the topic. And we are encouraging anyone who has an interest in growing medicinal cannabis to join us either in person or virtually for this event. In August, Attorney General Ryan Pender announced that the marijuana bill will be debated in Parliament before year's end and that the public is open to giving consultation and feedback on the draft legislation before the bill is tabled. Minister Campbell says the government is confident that the marijuana bill, when tabled, will pass in Parliament. I can say that the confidence is high. As you know with these things, you know, they ebb and flow. Um, as a result of the conference that we'll be having next week, there may be uh, new initiatives, there may be new amendments that we may have, that we may deem important and necessary to be implemented in what it is we want to achieve. As the uh, minister said previous, pre, uh, previously, you know, we see far too often that we go, we pass laws and then we have to come back and amend and re-amend. So that is why it's important for us and that's why the Caribbean Week of Agriculture is important in this session in particular because we wanted to get it as right as possible. We know perfection is sometimes a far-fetched idea and hope springs eternal, but we want to get it as right as possible before we bring it to the Bahamian people to Parliament. Also at today's Office of the Prime Minister's press briefing, Minister Campbell responding to questions concerning a possible limit on licenses for operating in the marijuana industry, as the matter is still being debated. That discussion is still ongoing, um, and it's a matter right now of high priority for the AG office and all of the other relevant stakeholders, and we should have a firm conclusion on that in short order. As I said, um, the activity and discussion is still at a fever pitch. It's still very high. And feel free to weigh in on any suggestions you may have on the website previously mentioned. 
For more information on the CAW 2023 session concerning marijuana farming, interested individuals may follow the Ministry of Agriculture and Marine Resources Facebook page or visit their website at cannabis.gov.bs. And finally in this segment, Climate Finance in the Americas and the Organization of America's State's Sustainable Development Conferences hosted here in the Bahamas earlier this week at the Atlantis Paradise Island Resort have resulted in the agreement and completion of three declarations as well as an action plan. This coming from Minister Halkidis at the Office of the Prime Minister's Weekly Press Briefing where he deemed both conferences successful. At the conclusion of the conference, we were able to agree all of the delegations there, which included um, the vast majority of the members of the Organization of American States. We were able to complete and release a declaration on climate finance, declaration of Nassau, and for sustainable development, we concluded another declaration and an action plan, which um, underscores the commitment of the countries in the region to, uh, to uh, poverty elimination and sustainable, resilient and equitable development. In August of last year, Prime Minister Philip Davis revealed that more than 50% of the country's outstanding debt can be linked to the impacts of hurricanes between 2015 and 2019. Senator Halkida says during the conference, many other countries echoed that 40 to 60% of their national debt was also linked to climate disasters. What we wanted to come out of this conference was a commitment by um, organizations such as the World Bank, the IMF, the Inter-American Development Bank, the Development Bank of Latin America and the Caribbean, as well as the um, Green Climate Fund and other uh, environmental funds to make more resources available to countries, make those resources available um, at affordable rates, work to ensure that the process of gaining access to these resources are not cumbersome and bureaucratic, so easing um, the way for countries to gain access to these uh, resources and um, implementing more what, what I would call more user-friendly instruments uh, that countries can use. So not strictly borrowing money, but you know, mixing in some grant funding and as well trying to mobilize some private sector, getting the private sector involved because as much funds as the IMF or the World Bank and those others might have, there is a need to blend in finance from the... From the um, private sector. A number of participating countries also agree to training in ways to access funding. The declarations agreed upon will be taken to the 28th United Nations Climate Change Conference of the Parties, that's COP28, as a common hemispheric position for the Caribbean and much of the Americas. So all these countries in the Western Hemisphere who are members of the Organization of, Amer of American States will be able to go and say this is our common position and it's a, it's a point that strengthens our negotiating position at the COP. But last thing I would say on that is an understanding that climate affects everything. We might think it's just, you know, a hurricane or a flood and that's it and it's an isolation. But we came away with an understanding from the experience of, of all the countries that, um, you know, it affects nations' ability to develop in a sustainable manner. And so um, we thought it was very successful. The participants were very happy. Uh, to be here in the Bahamas, and of course they commented on our uh, world-renowned hospitality. COP28 will take place on November 30th to December 12th in Dubai. We'll take a break here. We'll be right back after these commercials.